So one of the most requested things is uh, that I've gotten, I've been putting off for a while, is uh, details on my solar power setup here. So I'll give a five minute spiel on this. Um, we have two panels, um, they're 180 watts each, um, that I picked up from a company called Sun Electric, uh, Sun Elect, down in Miami. Um, I've had these for three years now, and uh, so far I've had no problems. Everything's been good. These are their B-grade panels, so there's some cosmetic defects, and uh, from up close on the top panel, I'm not sure if you can make it out, there's a couple. The bottom panel is basically perfect. There's nothing I can see that's actually wrong with it. Um, we built the, uh, the mounting hard, the frame, um, so we can adjust the angle, but we never actually really do. Because um, we don't use the cabin much in the winter. So um, it is designed so that we could uh, move the posts that are holding it upright forward and get a steeper angle come uh, winter time. Um, but like I said, we, we don't come out enough in the winter time for it to matter too much. Um, I have a combiner box that I build for the Home Depot box and two bus bars. Uh, I believe I have a picture of it uh, in the solar electric section of the website. Um, and to do that, I ended up cutting off the ends of the cables, these uh, connectors, and that way I was able to get bare wire. So two of the panels are connected together right here, so it acts kind of like one big panel. Um, and then outside of that, I have, uh, what's the gauge of this wire? Um, two gauge? I believe it's two gauge. Yeah. Um, so I have two black two gauge wires that enter a water uh, line that we buried, um, a two inch pipe. And those go back to the power room. Um, we ground the panels out with a six foot um, copper rod that we, we we banged in. And then the top, we have the two panels tied together. Um, it's a very simple, very inexpensive setup. Um, and with the panels the way they are now, uh, I think they're 320 bucks for the 180 watt panels from them. Um, so it's uh, for 600 bucks, we've been able to run this cabin uh, for three years solid now. Um, I've always been planning on adding four more panels so I can get to a kilowatt, but there's actually no need for me to. Um, I can run my power for my lights, vacuum cleaning, we have a vacuum cleaner here, um, and we run saws and all the kinds of stuff off of it. Um, but uh, if we were here full time, we would need more. Uh, I'm going to walk you back to the electrical room in a second here. So here's the outside of the electrical room. And on the right is where the power comes up through that black line at the bottom into uh, a combiner box that, I, that, that has a right angled fitting. So I have a hole that goes through the, the wall for them to go in. Um, on the other side, I have another one, and that's my ground. I have another six foot copper rod um, down at the bottom, and everything is ground up to that. And inside my electrical room, I have a very similar setup to what I originally had. The wires come in on the left and go into two breakers straight ahead. Um, the one breaker is in, so it goes into my Outback uh, Flex Max 80, which is way bigger than we need. Uh, I got it so I can go up to a kilowatt. Um, not needing it, I, I could have gone with a much smaller one. Um, when I do go to a kilowatt, we'll have the capacity. Uh, coming out of there on the right side there's the other breaker that goes to the battery so I can shut the batteries off um, and if you're gonna do any maintenance on the uh, charge controller you flip both those breakers so that the charge controller has no power going to it um, I also have the bare copper wire that goes into the bar on the right that's the, the ground bar and I also have a copper wire that goes over to my inverter so they're all grounded out to one common bus bar and I have the copper wire here that goes to the ground bar outside um, it's very very simple uh, then I have the ground the negative coming off the panels it also goes to the lower section bus bar they walk inside here right here so that 
takes the negative off from the panels. I have four wires going into my charge controller for negative. And then I take um, the output right here from the charge controller, goes through this breaker, down through this wire, and into my battery bank. And according to all documentation, I should have this all covered and vented. Um, while this is weather tight, it is not airtight in the least. And I've never had a problem with hydrogen buildup, um, things rusting because of it. Um, sooner or later, I'll get around to putting a vent pipe out the side. And I can run a 12 volt accessory fan off of this. So when it charges, it would run the fan. Um, but everything goes down into here. These wires, I believe, are like negative two gauge. They're, they're big, they're expensive. Um, I believe I have probably $60 in this heavy gauge copper wiring. Um, and then all those connectors on the tops of the batteries, probably $25 or $30. Um, the batteries came from Sam's Club, they're golf cart batteries. And uh, they're three years old now. Uh, I should check the uh, fluid levels in them, but uh, they've been they've been running good. Um, yeah, I have a little bit of corrosion on one lug. I'm gonna have to take off and clean. But other than that, so from the battery up to the inverter, I have my negative side over here on the on the right. My positive is over here on the left, and um, the negative comes around the bottom and there's two lugs on the bottom of the inverter, one for the negative, the positive side I bring it through a 150 amp um, fuse right here and then it goes into another 150 amp breaker. Um, these were picked up at like Pep Boys or AutoZone I think, AutoZone and they're about $15 each so I have three of them, I think I should have four, two extras lying around for spares. Um, they're much more cost effective than um, going and buying proper uh, the proper breakers. The inverter I got off Craigslist. Um, it says uh, Trace. Um, I think there's Antrex now. Uh, boat inverter. The guy I got it from had it on his boat. He was getting a bigger one. This is 1,500 uh, watts. Um, and it's 1500 on both sides. There's two um, sides you can actually switch on and off. Um, when I got it, I found that one side um, was only giving me 60 volts instead of the normal 120. So what I did, because I wasn't going to go out and spend big bucks on an inverter, was I have everything running off that one 20 amp breaker, and that feeds into my standard panel. And this is just a standard household panel. Um, nothing special about it. And that feeds my cabin. Um, it's a very simple setup. It requires very little of my time to get an emission to this door. Um, and other than checking the fluid from the batteries, um, there's not a lot to it. In order to work on that, you have to, you have to take the case off of this because these wires come in and connect on the inside. Um, you can also, this is a charger too, so if you have AC coming in, it will charge batteries. I've never used that feature, um, but a lot of them do that, especially on the higher end. Um, I have a remote on off switch, this yellow wire, that goes inside so I can turn it on and off from the inside. Um, and all the wires come out with the out and go up into my panel. Um, it, it, it's a very simple setup. Um, I do have a plan for it on, my, on the website. Um, it's uh, back when I put together it probably cost me two thousand dollars total if I had to do it again the same exact size I probably wouldn't buy the really expensive charge controller um, there's there's it's an MMPT um, charge controller because I have high voltage coming in and 12 volts coming out I could go with uh, a couple companies like my I guess Moonlight or Moonstar has one that would fit my needs for a hundred hundred and a half or something like that and that one was 500 um, so I could reduce cost on that uh, inverter wise I could probably get a new one 
around a thousand watts um, for about 500 I paid 350 used for that one um, and the panels like I said they were I paid a little over 500 they're down to a 300 ish now um, the drawback to the panels I have is I put out 27 volts give or take 28 volts and um, when I go to add more panels the selection is slimmer in that size um, they have them um, I can still get those same panels but they have a lot more panels that are standard uh, 18 volts um, output which is what you need to charge 12 volt batteries um, but right now I have 58 volts coming in and 13.8 coming out and it's only there's nothing really needed so it's only doing a float charge here um, 10 watts is coming in because the batteries are full um, if we were if we were out here we just got here today if we were out here last night it would be putting out more wattage but on a sunny day like today I'd probably be getting 200 watts out um, I also ended up getting way too much cabling um, but that's probably nothing you can really do about that either you're gonna have too much or too little I'd rather have too much um, I have spares if I ever need it um, we do end up getting mice out here so I have mice traps um, all over the place they've never chewed on the wiring luckily um, I think they come out of here just to get out of the rain uh, but uh, and this year I've had the mouse trap down here and they, I haven't gotten anything but there's a lot of mouse poop on the floor um, as a hydrometer I think I'm saying that right you can use that to check each individual cell um, I tend to use it more for battery filling um, it allows me to uh, just suck the water out of the distilled water bottle and fill each cell um, and uh, what else is there? Oh, from the, the green wire coming off of the uh, charge controller was an extra cost. It's a temperature sensor. It, I have it in between two of the batteries and it changes the charge based on the temperature because I guess batteries charge at different rates depending on the temperature. Um, and I've programmed that um, over the years for uh, what the recommended was for a wet um, six volt battery. They don't have these exact batteries, but you can use a Trojan uh, battery as a pretty close example. And right now you probably hear it ticking. That's what it's doing is it sends out pulses of electricity to see if anything needs it. If it's nothing that needs it, it, it's not turned on. If someone turns a light on, it will it'll make a more steady humming noise. When I originally planned on doing it, I planned on putting this all inside, but I thought that humming noise was a bit annoying, so I decided to build this little shack on the outside. Um, when these batteries are toast, hopefully in another couple years, maybe I'd like to get five years out of them, um, I'll probably extend the battery box along this wall here and put eight batteries in. Again, I don't really need to, I have plenty of capacity, but you, just in case, um, if, if we're out here for a week and it's raining all week, um, it's nice to have uh, more capacity than less capacity. Um, these batteries provide 450 amp hours. Um, each cell is 225. They're 6 volt. So you take the, uh, to make it 12 volts, you add two of the batteries together to get the voltage up and stay the 225. And then I have them wired together to give me the uh, 450 amp hour capacity. Um, that's about it really. If you have any questions about it, I'm going to post this as a separate video so we can get power questions directly related to this. And uh, I'll answer any questions if you want me to come back and do another uh, picture of something that I didn't catch. I think I got everything, but you can always, I always miss something. Um, if you have any comments, recommendations. Yeah, I'm not an electrician. Um, I picked up a book and looked at a lot of websites um, for people who are doing the same thing and built this. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's off-grid, um, off-code. It's this, it's, this building is um, is not tied to the grid and uh, doesn't have water lines or anything running to it. So I didn't have to meet a lot of the requirements. If you were building something for the city, this probably wouldn't pass muster. Those those fuses, uh, the, the fuses I'm using and the uh, breakers I'm using definitely wouldn't be code. 
probably have to enclose all the wiring on the end in boxes, and that wouldn't be a big deal to do. I kind of had a plan to do it, but I never got around to it. Um, when I do it again, if I, if I, when I rewire everything with new batteries, I will probably run conduit between boxes just to clean it up um, and make it look more organized, but it'll be exactly the same wiring um, that I have now. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know, and I will uh, I'll do my best to answer them from a non-electrician's non. I don't I don't work in construction, um, so this is uh, I'm just somebody who who wanted to get it done and figured it out. Um, so I'll, I'll answer them from that perspective. If you're looking for official, you know, licensed code, um, there's probably better videos on YouTube for that. Uh, but this was very cost-effective. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, it gives us all the power we need. Um, so, thanks for watching.